good day, my plant foldies. This is Richie at Grow Folds, and today we will be local nursery plant shopping at Green Acres Nursery in Melissa, Texas. As always, please make sure you are hitting that like button for my video and also subscribing to my channel with the daily notification bell on. And you can see that this is the Melissa Green Acres Nursery. This is a newly formed nursery that just recently opened and I'm super excited to show you guys the grand opening of this actual nursery. Um, today they actually um, showcased the houseplant section and I know that the majority of my plant foldies and if you're new to this channel I call my viewers and subscribers plant foldies. Um, I will be featuring mostly all of the indoor plants that they currently have. There is a Green Acres out in Irving, Texas. Um, I originally did a video of that and I would tell you out of the Dallas-Fort Worth area um, local plant nurseries, I would say Green Acres is another fabulous plant nursery to check out. I know that the Irving, Texas one is amazing and I'm super excited that we have a Melissa, Texas location now. Um, I am based out in North Dallas and this is about a 20 minute drive just further up north off of I, um, Highway I-75. So we'll definitely check to see what they have here. And as always, um, I'm gonna go ahead and walk through the entrance here and notice all of the supplies that they have for all of these plants. Now, um, I am actually grow going um, right after work. So it is late afternoon. Um, this nursery is open from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. daily. So that's super exciting. And you can see that they have a lot of different types of plant supplies. So they've got plant fertilizers right here, a whole aisle of this. It almost has this like grocery vibe about it. And I really like it a lot. I love that everything is nice and organized. And so we're just gonna keep walking around here and see what else that they have before we actually walk into the greenhouse. What I'm excited about is the fact that um, these um, planters right here, they've got just a variety of different colors, shapes, and I actually like a lot of the planters that they have here just because they've got some nice, simple planters. I really like that modern contemporary look. I don't really like a lot of textures or glazes on the planters, and you can even see right here, look at this simple dark gray planter here. I really like the look of it and they have some more of the square kinds as well. I don't really have any square planters in my collection of planters and then they just have these white um, concrete pots right here. I do like that as well and I like the fact that it's a little bit thicker. This kind of reminds me of PETA's planters. So if you haven't checked out that local plant shop out in Dallas, Texas, I also did a video feature not too long ago. That is an amazing um, small business that I hope you guys will also take the time to take a look at. But you can see over here, look at these beautiful gray pots that they have here. Now plant foldies, look at this. There are some more beautiful pots. I love that canary yellow, that just bright yellow um, planter there. I actually would buy this and let's see how much that costs. I believe this is $30. And then we also have a bunch of other planters. Now I love the orange planter here. Now I know Walmart has a, um, a version of this with a actually drainage hole and it's for $5. So I do like the fact that you can stack them up and then you can actually have a taller planter or at least give the illusion of a taller planter. I like that um, display as well. And then what else do we have here? So they've got some bird feeders, some bird houses. So they've got a lot of outdoor things that they can also you can also purchase at Green Acres. It has some grilling supplies and just all sorts of gardening supplies as well. Over here, we've got some glazed bonsai pots and they actually have the wires that can hold down the actual tree. I do love bonsai. I have a lot of bonsai pots just because I used to um, make my own bonsai a couple years back. I have one bonsai recently that I made and it is a variegated jade bonsai. It is doing very well. And you can see that this is just indoor pottery, indoor planters absolutely love it and i love that this green acres nursery just the inside of the shop it is nice and um full wide and it's just a really nice organized area so if you're looking for some nice planters and just anything that's for plant supplies um, i would recommend green acres I am very fortunate that this particular green acres nursery is a lot closer than the one um, obviously in urban texas I will definitely visit both locations just because I love this um, particular nursery. They have other locations in the, um, the country. I know they have some locations out in California, 
You can check out this end cap right over here. So they've got some orchid bark. So if you're going to ask me what kind of a um, mix I have, I use orchid bark that um, I buy though off of Lowe's. And then I also use perlite and I use um, a tree and shrub um, plant like soil mixture that I buy at Lowe's as well mix that all up and I have like a, a really chunky mix but you definitely want to add perlite that is a good um, soil amender to make your soil a little bit more fast draining and then they have an African violet um, potting mix as well um, speaking of African violet my um, green on green variegated African violet is doing amazing I'm gonna have to do a plant update or actually show you guys more of my personal plants I know I've given you guys glimpses of it I am still working on doing a um, whole home plant tour at some point once I get my house together um, I will definitely show you guys my coleus plant collection outdoors it's a little bit easier for me to film but um, to go back to this look at the arrangement of planters look at that sky blue um, planter there I really love the look of that planter I just think it's very modern it's very simple now these are what you would call catch planters I don't think they have drainage holes so you would really just have to put the plant in its grower pot into it and I love the color of this this has that illusion of being a terracotta planter and I just like the fact that the shape of it specifically that cylinder shape is nice I like the fact that it is not really shiny I like more matte finishes at least for my planters and you can see that they've got different colors these navy blue colors for these planters are stunning as well as this um, well that looked like a gray one but that's actually a navy blue one and then I am in love with the yellow planters as well but as I pan out of here um, I do want to talk about planters at some um, point again when I do plant shopping, but you know, something like this yellow planter right here, this would be good for something that has more darker foliage, like maybe a Raven ZZ or darker plants. And then obviously the more pastel looking planters that can really pretty much work with any of the um, plants that you want to put in there. And then I'm not really a fan of the, like the basket, the wicker basket type planters. Um, I tried that, but it doesn't really work with my, my home's aesthetics, but you can see they've just got several different types of like outdoor supplies. They've got a bunch of garden supplies here. So they've got some watering cans, rakes, shovels, some gloves, all the things that you would need to work with um, for an outdoor garden. Anyways, the main event is what I came for, and this is the house plants or the tropical plants section. So what I'm super excited about is to show you this. Now I will, um, you know, warn you guys now, um, this may not be as full of a um, plant nursery as compared to the urban Texas green acres, but I am so excited to see that they have tropical plants and they have some rare and uncommon ones here. So as you can see from what the staff has told me, they just got their tropical plants um, this past Tuesday. And so when I filmed this, this was actually Saturday late afternoon. And you can see that they already have a lot of these arranged. Um, I am um, expecting that this nursery, this indoor section will get full as the days and months go by. And I am gonna be here to film it and just give you guys some live updates but as um, I've said before and if you haven't seen my green acres video from the Irving Texas one definitely check that out it is about an hour and a half long um, video just to see you know show you all the different types of plants here but I am glad that there's not nearly as many people um, shopping this area um, I came really late apparently based on what the staff was saying they were super busy um, earlier today since it is their grand opening relaunch so I'm super excited that I came at a pretty opportune time but you can see that they're still setting up their tables they've got quite a bit of plants and you know i'm gonna definitely show that i'm gonna try not to get people in the videos but you know it is a little bit difficult to get these um shots of um, people so whenever i do my plant shopping videos i try my very best to respect people's privacies i know some people may not be into getting um to being even cameos for um, plant shopping videos so i i'll do my best but i'm gonna walk over here and show you this beautiful living wall so you can see that it is shaped like a heart and i love living walls so um, that is something that I might even try to play with in my home. This gives me some inspiration to possibly hook a bunch of plants and just have that set up for one of my walls. I can actually imagine it. And you can see that they have just several different plants here. They've got a little bench. So this could be more of like a photo op area. I do love the fact that they have this as a focal point or one of the focal points for this indoor plant nursery. 
So I met Parker and talked to Parker, who happens to be the person that is in charge of the indoor houseplant area. Super excited to have met him just because he was super friendly. And I can say that the staff at Green Acres, um, they have some great customer service. And that's what I love is because even as I was walking around um, this this location and even the miss of the, the Irving, Texas location, I remember meeting Tanya out there. They were very accommodating, very um just very welcoming and they asked me if I needed any help. Um, they answered all of my questions. So if you are somebody that lives out in the Dallas Fort Worth area, or if you're traveling to Dallas and you are um, going up to say Oklahoma, you can stop by Green Acres and Melissa and check this beautiful nursery out. They have a massive outdoor section. So I'm actually gonna do a video later this Tuesday to feature just the outdoor section because I already know that this video is gonna be a little bit lanky. I think it's gonna be more than an hour. So I hope all of my plant foldies will stick around. And if you're just watching my videos for the first time, um, please make sure that you subscribe to my channel with the notification bell on. I premiere all of my plant shopping videos daily around 7 p.m. Central Standard Time with the live premiere chat. And I would love for you guys to say hello if this is your first time watching this, um, this video during a live premiere. As you can see here, we've got a beautiful Sansevieria plant. I don't know specifically the plant ID. It kind of escapes me. I think it might be a Sayuri, but look at how beautiful this bromeliad is right here. Love that purple as well. So I don't really see a lot of purple bromeliads. That's really cool. And then obviously they have another bromeliad right over here. This is a pink one. I'm going to lift it up, see how much it costs. $22.50. Not a bad price for a bromeliad. And I have just one bromeliad. It's not near nearly as bright. I don't have the pink um, colors on it, but I did get it on sale for $2.45. So I was really excited about that. I ended up buying that at Kroger. But anyways, I always say, um, you know, plant you know, shop at local plant nursery, support local businesses. Super cool that um, Green Acres is now available way up north because I do live out in the North Dallas area and this is you know pretty accessible to me. I will say I do a lot I'm able to do a lot of plant shopping videos um daily because I've got several big box stores within a five to ten minute radius and then there are several um plant nurseries like this so they just continue to open up and um they just have some amazing plants so I love the fact that I live in Dallas Texas and the fact that I can show you all of these um, plants daily. I know that some of these plants may be plants that you will probably see almost every day. I hope you guys don't get tired of my content. I really just like talking about plants. Um, I find it relaxing. I find the editing process of showing videos like this just to show, you know highlight um, plant nursery so you guys have a more awareness of what kind of plant nurseries we have out in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. But I am gonna um, walk over here and notice that it's not as full, which means that they can actually have even more tables full of plants. Um, it, I will be interested to see how how many more plants that they get shipped. Um, I know that the Green Acres Melissa location has been open for about more than a month, but they finally did the ground opening just because they got their indoor section um, together. And that's really what a lot of, I know most of you viewers that watch my channel, you guys wanna see more of the indoor plants. So I'm gonna really try my best. However, I do like all plants. So um, you will also see some of the outdoor plants. I'm gonna do a separate video for that. But today, and I don't even know what this plant is here, I'm gonna assume it's some type of a mature philodendron. But as I pan over here, look at how beautiful these pink plants are. I love pink plants. So we have like a table of chrysanthemums and we have some bromeliads here. And these bromeliads are absolutely stunning. And when I talk about viewing certain plants, um, this is better having them from a top view because obviously you can actually enjoy the pink um, coloration and then I did want to walk over here so over here they have a table full of um, plant giveaways and um, 
I definitely want to join the raffle. And congratulations to Love Plant 1798 for winning that Monstera Thai constellation that I did as a giveaway on my Instagram channel. I mean, my Instagram page. Now, I will be doing another plant giveaway, so please stay tuned. If you haven't um, followed me on my Instagram, it is at Growfold, so check that out because I do post on that daily. But you can see here they have this as a giveaway. This is a philodendron moonlight. They have a philodendron Jose Buono. And then we're gonna walk over here. And I know Parker is gonna go ahead and show me this. I told him that I wouldn't get his face in there because I don't know about people and just being put on YouTube, but he was super excited to show me the new leaf of this variegated Alocasia odora. I used to have a variegated Alocasia odora. Um, I just ended up overwatering it when I um, kept it indoors for the winter and the bulb just rotted. So I was really disappointed about that. Um, I love that variegation. It is one of my favorite Alocasia alocasias to grow or variegated alocasias um, but as I pan over here look at how beautiful the setup is I can only imagine the full potential of this once they get more plants in I will say that the plants they have um, are actually maximizing on what type of varieties that they have which is really exciting because you know you talk about square footage of certain nurseries um, they might have a lot of square footage but not necessarily the diversity of plants like right over here is one of my favorite philodendrons this is the philodendron squamiferum this one is for $50 and it is already huge. I was actually tempted to just go ahead and buy this. This is an, a 10 inch planter. And what I love about the philodendron squamiferum is the petioles have a fuzzy petiole. And as that um, matures, the leaves get um, a different shape. And then over here is another favorite of mine. This is a philodendron moonlight in a 10 inch planter. This one, or not a 10 inch planter, six inch planter, 3250. I would pay that price. Um, you know, sometimes we talk about plants growing them when they're a little bit smaller, but for a philodendron that size, um, for that price, I would pay it. Sometimes we want to just buy big plants for that instant gratification. I understand that, you know, some, the, the art of growing plants is to grow them, but sometimes I want to already have a big plant like that. And that's super exciting to see. We have a philodendron moonlight. I love yellow neon plants as much as I love dark foliage plants. And then you can see right here, uh, another um, philodendron squamiferum. I actually would buy this one. Um, who knows, I might come back and buy this um, plant next Tuesday. It is for $50 and I can just imagine using my leaf spray to really get the leaves shiny. I have been working on my plants. You know, the good news is, and as basic as this, as this sounds, I have um, had a chance to really water my plants. So. I'm getting better at that routine. You know, I, I give you guys a lot of like plant insights, um, you know, care tips and stuff. But the problem is I don't necessarily um, follow my care tips. So I probably need to do a better job. But right over here is another um, philodendron squamiferum. That's a smaller variety, you know, version um, that was only for $13.50. And then we talk about um, you know, plants growing on totem poles. This is a Epiprenum panatum cebu blue. This is for $22.50. And you can see that it's starting to fenestrate. There's like a little hole here. Love this plant. It's endemic to my home country, which is the Philippines. So over, you know, this is a proud Filipino here, um, Mabuhay. And if you are Filipino or Kababayan, please leave comments in Tagalog. I will respond to you as well in Tagalog. So check that out, um, you know, so definitely let me know. And then over here, we've got a philodendron um, Birkin. Now this philodendron Birkin for $9.99 isn't nearly as variegated. Um, and it, needless to say, you know, the, the variegation, it might come there. I'm not sure about philodendron Birkin's um, variegation on whether it's influenced by light or the initial genetics. But here we have another beautiful Skindapsis trubrii moonlight. And then we have a philodendron silver sword here. Love this. And it's only for $22.50. Notice how there, there are several plants growing al alongside this plank. Um, that is, um, if you notice that the lower leaves are smaller, but as the plant starts to grow up the totem pole or plank, you can see that the leaves get larger. They, sh they start to change in their leaf shape. And um, that's what you want to do. You want to make sure that the aerial roots on the plants actually attach to the plank. That's when it starts to really size up. Love this as well. Um, you can actually take a two by four and um, do this yourself. Um, take a bunch of cuttings of Silver Sword. This is an easy plant to propagate. I actually have one that I bought from HEB, which is a grocery store out in Texas. I bought it for $6 in a four inch planter. So 
um, you know, you can get different varieties of pricing for plants. Like this is actually a really beautiful looking um, Skindapsis Jade. Now Skindapsis Jade is actually more of an uncommon Skindapsis. Normally when you think about green plants, you think of it being com uh, common, but this one is um, the opposite. Skindapsis are more silvery um, and like shiny metallic foliage. This one is more of a um, Jade Satin. Um, and I love that plant because it can get very large leaves. And then over here is another Epipremnum panata marble queen pothos. Notice how that the pothos plant, when grown up a totem, they start to really size up the leaves. I actually prefer to see um, pothos growing up a totem pole, a plank like this, and just really filling it up and just having really large leaves. Um, I love that this marble queen is already getting some larger leaves. And look at that variegation there. Now, there are some, um, you know, really d deep green foliage, but you want a mixture or a, a balanced plant when it comes to variegation. I know some of us will be really into like highly variegated plants. The problem is highly variegated plants may not be very stable in terms of its health because the variegation or the white parts or the, the colored parts don't really carry chlorophyll and you really need that for the plant to feed itself and to be able to photosynthesize. So there is a give and take. I know that there is just more of a big push for variegation, but know that you want to have some green in your plant or at least um, enough to where the plant can sustain itself. And then over here is another Epipremnum arium golden pothos. Now the marble queen pothos, the golden pothos, any type of pothos, my plant foldies, um, are easy to care for plants. They can tolerate lower light conditions and they're easy to propagate as well. I say that in every video, but it is really true. Like if you don't have a pothos plant in your collection and you're growing indoors, please buy yourself a pothos plant and also buy this philodendron lemon lime for $22.50 on a totem. Love this philodendron lemon lime. Some people will say that this is a common plant, but notice how the aerial roots have really started to attach to the, the plant. That's what you really wanna do. If you wanna encourage um, aerial roots to actually attach to a plant, what I do is actually put a plant, um, put the plant, sorry, the plant next to a humidifier and the humidity levels will really just keep the air like moist and those aerial roots will get activated and start to attach to the plank that's one way that i've um, been able to get my 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 plants to attach to like a um, a pole or something of that nature and then over here we've got a raffidophora discurva um, beautiful plant they call this the dragon tails plant um, it is one of those plants though that it really doesn't start to fenestrate unless you really grow it up a pole if you don't put it up on a pole it actually um will have very small leaves it can get actually very leggy but i have just been spending a little bit of time on these tables and these tables are the same similar similar tables i can't talk tonight about um the actual green acres in irving texas they have the same type of table setups and you can see right here this is a philodendron heteracium lemon lime look at how beautiful that yellow is and you know this is one of my favorite plants to grow as well it is a common plant but it is a plant that um, is just absolutely stunning to me and then right over here let's take a look at what we have here this is an epipremnum panatum um Cebu blue pothos again this is um notice how that the leaves on the one that was growing on a totem had larger leaves this one is smaller just because it's in its juvenile form and what's really interesting is you can grow this Cebu blue pothos up like a very tall tree and you, it will actually fenestrate and split its leaves it's super cool um the the blue or that blue tone you need to you can only get that tone if you give it more bright indirect light so just remember to do that and then also this philodendron heteracium just a green version it's got larger leaves i love the heart-shaped leaves it's another easy to care for plant so these philodendron heteraceums are very similar to the epipremnum ariums or pothos they have similar growth um, tendencies and growth habits so i think that's cool and then over here we've got a philodendron birkin again another philodendron um, heteracium although people will also call this a philodendron cordatum so plant foldies or any viewers that are watching this and that's only for five dollars and 75 cents awesome price for that for an easy care plant will you let me know the difference between a philodendron cordatum and a heteracium 
And then over here is a philodendron silver sword for $32.50. Not a bad price at all, considering you get plenty of plants. And these are already growing up some type of support. I'm going to take this down and show you this. Like, look at that. Wow. And look at how the leaf changes more into like a triangular form. Um, I am glad that I actually have the silver sword in my collection as well. It's currently growing outside and it actually gets a lot of sun and it's not burning. I will be repotting it soon, maybe this weekend, um, coming weekend. Um, when I have a little bit of time, I might put it on a pole and put it in a planter that is just going to be simple and I'll still grow it outside. Actually, a trick to getting a lot of your indoor plants to size up or grow faster is to actually grow them outside during the spring and summer. Um, I've noticed that, you know, plants just grow at a faster rate when they're outside. I don't know if it's just because it's out in fresh air or if there's just more readily available like light, but that's just one way to get your plants to really accelerate its growth. And then again, I'm going to show you this philodendron. I say philodendron. This is a Skindapsis um, Trubii Moonlight. Sometimes I get my plant IDs mixed up because I am literally coming off of work. I am a little bit tired, but I also just see all of these plants um, daily. And it's just sometimes I just kind of mix up the plant ID. So bear with me. But you can see we got the Skindapsis Trubii Moonlight right next to the Skindapsis Jade Satin. Love both plants. I need to probably buy them from um, Green Acre just because they have some really good quality plants then that's the thing about going to a local plant nursery you get higher quality plants pest free plants or if there are pests they're they're very minimal now i like i've talked about before whenever you buy a plant just anywhere whether it's a big box store well especially a big box store or a local plant nursery like um, Green Acres, my suggestion is to make sure you're spraying down the plant, whether it's with an insecticidal soap or some neem oil spray. I have my own DIY neem oil spray um, that I use. I spray the plant down like I spray the tops of the plant, the bottom of the leaves, um, the, the stems, in between the, the nodes, and also the surface of the pot, or yeah, the surface of the soil and the bottom of the pot, and then I quarantine that plant for about two to three weeks before I actually add it into my plant room or my plant collection just to prevent um, pests. And I know that that is a lot, but when you think about it, and I say this in every single video, pests are the demise of um, plant collections. It can really take out a plant collection that you have spent a lot of time, a lot of money investing in. And that's the last thing you want to do is take one plant with some type of um, hitchhiker pest. And all of a sudden you are struggling to get rid of the pest. But um, as I pan out away from here, we've got some more tables. And I will say with Green Acres, they have such a phenomenal way of organizing their plants. I have to hand it to the staff. Um, and I will say that this is a nursery that I would highly recommend. Definitely want to give it five stars on like a Google review, but just the quality of plants and the amount of plants that they will carry especially the outdoor plant i the outdoor section of the melissa location it's stellar i am excited to show you guys that but today you know obviously i'm showing you guys these indoor plants like this is a philodendron heteracium brazil another plant that is common but easy to grow it is another plant that is underrated. Um, I think people should be growing that. And then you can see we've got a lot of Epipremnum arium and Joys here. Another favorite of mine. Look at how beautiful the variegation is. And with the Enjoy Pothos, at least for me, and this is for $9.75, I would say that this Pothos re um, really keeps its variegation. It doesn't really revert. Even if you give it lower light conditions, it may not be as white, but it will definitely not revert all the way to green. I haven't seen that. And as I pan over here, I am just in awe and I am actually happy. I really didn't plan on leaving work. You know, I worked a 10 hour shift at work and then drove out to um, Green Acres just because I couldn't wait till Tuesday just to see the indoor um, tropical plants that they have. And I'm so excited to have been able to make it here. You can see that that is a beautiful philodendron silver sword. Philodendron silver sword used to be quite expensive. So now, um, you know, with plant pricing going down a little bit or at least being more affordable, I love the fact that these plants are more readily available for just a common um, person like me who just loves plants. You know, I say this all the time, like even this philodendron heteracea in Brazil, you know, you can go to like this plant nursery and that's for $15.50 for a six inch planter. Really good price, really healthy looking plant, beautiful plant. 
and I am gonna buy this eventually, maybe on Tuesday at um, this location because I love Skindapsis Jade Satin. I have just one that I got from a friend, but I, I don't have a full like plant like this. And then look at their Skindapsis Trubii Moonlight. So the only drawback about any Skindapsis is when you compare it to like a Pothos plant, their growth habits tend to be a little bit slower. I have yet to really see any type of Skindapsis trailing. Every time I go to like a big box store or a local plant nursery, I don't see like full hanging baskets of skindapsis versus like you know philodendron heteraceums or you know pothos plants like this right here beautiful epipremnum arium global green pothos this one is not a bad price at all as well and you can see that green on green variegation is pretty pronounced um, with this particular plant the variegation on this global green pothos is influenced by the amount of light you give it if you give it less light it will be more green and less variegated and actually with this golden pothos this one is for $15.50 another beautiful golden pothos this one is trailing again um, I'm gonna go venture to say that the majority of people that get into plants probably started out with a golden pothos um, um, that was one of my first house plants that I ever got. I actually got a Syngonium as my first house plant, Syngonium white butterfly that I grew in a bathroom without any windows and for some reason it worked. But as you can see here, this is a plant I will always repeat myself. Please buy this plant. Get yourself a golden pothos. Get yourself a pothos plant. It is an easy plant. Buy it at the Melissa Green Acres um, location if you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area because that is such an easy plant to grow. And then over here, we've got another Skindapsis. I'm not 100% sure what Skindapsis, but this one is a beautiful one. And what I like about Skindapsis is when you um, when it needs to be watered, the leaves start to curl up a little bit, and that shows that it's a little thirsty. Um, again, it is a beautiful plant to either grow up a totem pole or just let it trail down. Um, it is a nice, beautiful silver plant. I love silver plants as well. And then you can just see all of those totem plants. And as I pan away, look at that. That's just, it's just beautiful here. So the Green Acres location out in Irving had a cage where they had all of their rare and uncommon plants. So clearly this is going to be the rare and uncommon section. They're still filling it up, but we're just going to take a peek of what plants they already have over here. Um, this is what excites me to go to the Melissa location of Green Acres. It's just because I'm going to see just develop more and they're going to get more restocks and I'm going to be here for it to document it and share with my plant Foley community what plants they have available here and you can see here this is a large monstera escaletto um, monstera escaletto is basically a giant form of monstera adansonia look at how large the leaves are look at that that is so stunning and then we have a philodendron jose bono right over here growing on a totem this is for 145 dollars um, pretty good variegation i just don't know if i would spend 145 just yet on a philodendron jose bono but you know it is a healthy looking plant that variegation is beautiful and with this particular plant again i feel like philodendron need to be growing up a totem um, just because that's when the leaves start to get large that's the best um you know variegation that you'll get out of it just because you have larger foliage and you can definitely see that with the jose bono and that is another plant. Jose Bono is actually a pretty fast growing philodendron as well. And that's the thing I like about philodendron. Most philodendron are pretty easy to take care of. Um, you know, some philodendron are extremely expensive, but in terms of care tips, you know, they, they have very similar care tips as in like, provide them with bright indirect light that's really the best you know water them on a consistent basis i would say with philodendrons mostly just wait till the soil is about 50 percent dry or even a little bit drier and just give it a good soak and you're good to go and then over here we have these cool little starter plants these are for six dollars and fifty cents um, these are what you would call those Gen Z plants. So Gen Z plants are plants that are in just smaller forms. Sometimes they're going to be like uncommon or rare or common, but you can see here, this is another type of Calathea, and this one is for $6.50. Now with my Calatheas, if I were gonna buy this, this would definitely go in straight water. I would grow it hydroponically because I don't really have issues growing um, 
you know, at least calatheas in hydroponics because then I don't have to really worry about the watering um, consistency. Again, I am an underwaterer and it was really interesting that I was featuring a bunch of um, succulents and cactus um, at another local plant nursery called um, the North Haven Gardens out in Dallas. And somebody mentioned that, you know, cactus and succulents are the best types of plants for somebody who is an underwater and it's exciting you know it's kind of funny that i don't actually have a lot of cactus or succulent in my collection but you can see here this is a peperomia little tuscany and i do like that they do have plant ids on these and then this is another fern right here for six dollars and fifty cents so love that if you want to just start um a small little um, collection of plants you can buy these like gen z plants and you can see here, this is another kangaroo fern for $6.50. Very tiny, cute little plant. I actually find them adorable. And I love that they have some of a selection here. And then they have a flowering anthurium as well in a starter of two inch starter. This is for $6.50. Um, I like these um, anthuriums. I like to grow them hy hydroponically as well. And then this is a philodendron orange marmalade. So if you want a starter plant, um, you can get a starter plant for um, through Gen Z plants. And then you can see here a philodendron golden imperial. So I need this uh, philodendron. Like I definitely need this philodendron here, but these are for $20 so they're a little bit pricey for starter planters and then this is a philodendron meloni um, nei um melanoni yeah melanoni i think that's how you pronounce it beautiful looking one it almost looks like a philodendron moonlight i love yellow plants and i love the fact that they have several little tiny yellow plants here you can see they've got another philodendron golden imperial that is beautiful I need that as well, but that is for $20. So it's a little bit pricey for a starter planter. I know that if you want to buy starter planters like this, um, you can actually buy it off of Etsy, off of the Green Escapes, which is a very reputable um, online nursery as well. But since I live close by this Melissa, Texas, Green Acres, this Anthurium for Gedei, for instance, for $20, I may end up buying. So I'm just glad that I have some more rare and uncommon plants that are within the radius of where I am based at. And while this place at least currently doesn't have nearly as many plants as they have at the Green Acres out in Irving, Texas, I'm just excited that they finally have a second location. I hope that Green Acres continues to make um, different locations all out in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And then over here, variegated Alocasia odora, I would say of the plants that I'm curr I've currently seen at Green Acres, this is the most exciting one, these um, Alocasia variegated um, odoras, because look at that. Look at how stunning that variegation is. I can't get over that. And what's exciting about alocasias is if you grow this, you know you're gonna get babies um, sprouting out. They It will produce corms. That's just a natural way. And those corms will have the same stable variegation of this alocasia. And I mean, look at this. That is an extremely just white. That's just a white leaf. And it's interesting that none of the leaves have really started to brown. If I were to buy this um, alocasia, it is a little bit pricey though. It's for $199, but it is in a 10 inch planter. So it's a pretty large plant. But what I was gonna say is if I did buy this, in order to protect that variegation, I would actually um, water it with a silica solution. I, um, there's this solution that I um, have called Protex, so it's spelled P-R-O-K-E-T. You can buy that on Amazon, and for your variegated plants, I've noticed that they are more heat resistant, their variegation doesn't really brown up and crisp, and it's a very affordable solution that I use on my my um, variegated plants. I also use it for my Japanese maples, um, just because Japanese maples will burn when it gets a little hot or if it gets too much sun. But I noticed that there's less burning when I um, water with that Protect solution. But anyways, let me get off of that ramble and show you more of these plants. This is a beautiful Philodendron Gloriosum. Love the velvety textures on the Philodendron Gloriosum. Now I've been seeing some Philodendron Gloriosum showing up at big box stores, but the Green Acres location has it readily available. And these are a pretty good size uh, for six inch planters of Philodendron Gloriosum. And you can 
see that there is a beautiful Montserrat Thai constellation there. I am excited that I was able to get a Montserrat Thai constellation plan giveaway on Instagram. I am planning on doing another one with another Montserrat Thai constellation, so stay tuned for that. But you can see here, beautiful Philodendron Gloriosum. I might actually buy this Philodendron Gloriosum and possibly do a plant giveaway with that. We'll see because I just want to continue to grow my, my Grow Folds Plant Foldy community. Um, these plant shopping videos, it really means a lot to me to just be able to see all of you guys showing up on those live premiere chats. And even the nurseries that I have featured have been so kind and encouraging and welcoming for me to film, you know, these these plants because I want to show these plants like this one right here is for $27.50. This is a variegated opuncia really like that a lot um i would actually want to buy one of these now i am growing a prickly pear cactus in my yard and it actually does survive um the cold winters we have my grow zone is 8b but i would be curious to see if i could grow a variegated opuncia out in the landscape now this cactus i'm not 100 percent sure what it is but i love the ghostly look it has um, if you know the plant ID for that particular cactus, please let me know. I am assuming that it's uncommon or rare just based on it being in this little um, section where it's like locked up. They actually have it open for the public to just see. But you can see here there is a sea of philodendron um, ring of fire. We've got a bunch more of these um, philodendron gloriosums. I Gosh, I really love the velvety leaves of the gloriosum. And those leaves can get larger as well if you let the gloriosum grow on a totem pole. We've got a, got a bunch of um, Alocasia jacqueline's, and again, these um, Philodendron Ring of Fires, these are for $20. Look at that variegation, and with Philodendron Ring of Fire, you want to give this a totem pole or a moss pole to latch onto. It's more mounding, but the leaves will get larger. And then this is another philodendron ring of fire. So I actually lucked out and found the same type of sizes of philodendron ring of fire at Walmart. It was on clearance for $7. So what I want to do is actually have philodendron um, ring of fires and, um, you know, grow two or three in a pot with a totem pole so I can get a more full plant. And then over here, $20 for these Alocasia jacqueline's. And I am thinking about getting another Alocasia jacqueline probably from green acres out in melissa texas because they've got several to choose from um, my alocasia jacqueline that i bought at walmart as a trending tropicals cost of farms plant it just didn't do well for me and you know this particular alocasia is a little bit more challenging to grow but it's such a cute looking alocasia look at how beautiful it is um, i definitely want to add more alocasia to my collection but i know that i've already neglected some of my alocasias that i bought you know earlier this year so i need to make sure to nurse them back to health and just really have a solid routine on taking care of them and then over here is an interesting philodendron so this is a philodendron paraiso verde this one is for twenty dollars notice that it has some variegation the variegation is not really impacted by the amount of light you give it it is the it is impacted by the temperature it's in in hotter climates or temperatures you will get better variegation from this so like maybe this would be a great candidate to grow up on a totem pole or some type of support and put it outside in a Texas um, summer where we get 100 plus degree weather. Maybe it'll get even better variegation. And then over here is a philodendron white wizard. Beautiful variegation on that as well. These are actually pretty highly variegated. Really like that a lot. And this is another philodendron that is an easy to grow philodendron. I'm surprised on how vigorous of a growth it's worked for me. I have one as well and it's growing on a totem and um, it's just uh, unfurling leaves pretty quickly and it's starting to size up as well so i am excited about that this is a beautiful philodendron white wizard again these are for twenty dollars not a bad price at all now i know you can probably find these at a big box store like walmart for the same range of price actually it's 24.47 by growers bench if you're going to buy it at walmart so it's actually more um cost effective to buy it at this local plant nursery 
um, and then we have some more philodendron pink princess these are in six inch planters this is for forty dollars so this one is a little bit pricey i would say the variegation is okay now with philodendron pink princess um, the variegation or the pink is actually influenced by the original genetics of the plant meaning if the plant isn't as variegated to begin with it's not probably not going to push out as much variegation um, some plants are influenced by the amount of light you give it so they might have better variegation philodendron pinches you can flood it with a grow light 24 7 if it doesn't have a lot of variegation it's just not going to push out that pink but needless to say the dark foliage on a philodendron pink princess is stunning dark foliage plants there's a certain elegance about them um, i find that dark foliage plants are more synonymous to just elegance same thing with white plants white blooms pink flowers all of that i don't know if it's just me but that's really what i kind of attribute to them and then this is really interesting twenty dollars for a philodendron that's just green although it's being called a philodendron white wizard um, this is probably not a philodendron white wizard and if it is it probably reverted so there is some chance for those plants to revert and you know with any variegated plants um plant foldies just know that certain plants may not have that stable variegation there is always a chance of them actually reverting so if you have a plant that say does like this philodendron um, paraiso verde that just keeps pushing out green leaves i would cut it back to encourage the plant to possibly push out new variegation i know that some people have done that on like monstera albos that um started to revert back to green and i actually did that with one of my monstera albos it actually pushed out some better variegation but you can see this is the more uncommon rare area um, i have yet to get a um philodendron paro iso verde but it is another philodendron that i will add i just think that philodendrons are super easy to take care of like this is right here is a philodendron urobescence pink princess love that as well this one actually has better variegation and these are in six inch planters but um overall really excited that we have some rare plants. I want to see what other rare plants that they're going to get. And this is some type of Epipremnum panatum, a mature form. And when talking to Parker, they mentioned that they will be getting more uncommon Hoyas. So I am definitely going to come back to go film that right now. They don't really have a selection of Hoyas, but I need this like plant foldies. If you guys want to support me on funds, you know, drop a super sticker. That's like a tip that you can leave for um, the, the live premiere or even um, after watching this video. Video, you can do that that way we can go ahead and raise funds for myself to go buy this $200 uh, variegated alocasia adora like that is a plan like I really want to get the one that has the white but I just can't justify spending $200 at the moment but yes if you want to support me that way by just dropping a super sticker I would love that a lot um, but you're really not obligated to honestly the best way you do you can support me for these for this YouTube channel is literally hitting the like button that's all I ask if you can hit the like button and leave a comment after the video or during the video um, that's all the support i would really um, want to ask of anybody watching my videos i did want to take a little bit more time to show you all of the variegated alocasia adora so that i had to take them down um, to the floor just so you can see what the variegation looks like look at that look at the white one though and it has that minty look about it so i'm just going to pan over here and just show you this leaves on this alocasia and this one actually has little babies growing out of it so if you guys are going to help me you know get some funds for that that would be awesome um, i am definitely going to need to save my money in order to spend 200 dollars for that but um, we're back out and i'm looking at these large ficus lyrata they're about 18 feet tall beautiful ficus lyrata right here those fiddle fig leaves are beautiful plants mine is doing very well and i ended up buying mine for 99 cents at a grocery store called sprouts it has pushed down new leaf now with ficus lyrata or fiddle fig leaf actually we just um 
ficus in general, they like consistency. And what I mean by consistency is they definitely like a lot of light, bright indirect light or just full sun for some of these. Like my ficus um, elastica or rubber tree plants are growing outside in full sun and it's just helping them grow a little, at a faster rate. But I also have a ficus Audrey that I've severely neglected that's even bigger than this. And I remember buying it at Walmart for as, as a six inch planter and it has grown into a full blown tree. I just need to trim it back repot it and then put it out like either in a little bit of shade or just put it out in sun and see if it'll just grow back into a, like a nice bushy plant and then over here is a ficus elastica taniki now this plant needs a lot of light any cut type of ficus like this ficus benjamina here it looks like it was braided by multiple plants but it looks like it also has fused together to make one thick plant that's pretty cool but ficus benjamina that is considered an indoor tree but the thing about it is it doesn't do as well indoors unless you have a lot of light it will literally shed its leaves all the time until it actually is happy but you can see here this is another fill um, ficus um, elastica burgundy and then we also have this um, ficus altissima right here this is a tree form really like the green on green variegation and like all ficus this one needs a lot of light as well that's probably what makes ficus plants slightly difficult to grow just because i feel like um, houses or indoor spaces may not ha necessarily have the best lighting to really sustain plants that require a lot of high light unless you're growing grow you know with grow lights which i supplement a lot of my plants with grow lights most of my lampshades and bulbs are all grow lights because i want to maximize on that but as you can see here even more plants so these are chiflera plants or umbrella tree plants love this this is only for fifteen dollars and fifty cents um it's starting to get woody at the base so that's really nice so it's a more of a mature plant i like the shape of um, a chiflera i think it's a really nice looking plant this one is an easy to care for plant and this one right here is only that's not a bad price at all 25.50 so a slight price difference but you get a larger chiflera so this is just a green form i actually have one that is a highly variegated form and surprisingly i am growing out in a south facing side of my my front yard in full sun and it is not burning so that's you know an interesting tidbit about that but you know all of these plants Whenever you think about plants, some plants are low light tolerant. Now I will say all of the palms that I'm about to feature are not low light tolerant. They definitely need, you know, I would say um, palms as well need a lot of light in order for them to really survive. They don't do very well in darker spaces. So that's the reason why I'm not as interested on um, palms because they also take a lot of surface space, but I want to show you this. So look at how beautiful this Dracaena marginata is. Look at that. Love that like maroon pink cream variegation and even the texture of the leaves really nice little piece and then we've got some giant um dracaenas here and i say this in every video as well but dracaenas are highly underrated plants they're beautiful plants, very easy plants, probably one of the easiest plants to take care of. This one is a Janet Craig Compacta for $15.50. Um, if you don't have a Janet Craig Compacta, I would recommend getting one because they are easy to grow. Um, this is a stunning um, Dracaena White Aspen here. So I actually found a Dracaena White Aspen out in Lowe's. The only problem with the Dracaena White Aspen, and I haven't seen them in this size, is they tend to burn or crisp up on the white variegation of the leaves. So that's one, one thing that this is probably one of the more challenging um, uh, Dracaenas to grow, but it needless to say, it's one of the most beautiful ones. You can see that this is a large Dracaena Warneckii right here here um it and you can see that it is it, it's a full-blown tree at this point and it's not a bad price at all as well this is for 67 dollars and 50 cents um this dracaena just like most dracaenas can tolerate lower light conditions i would recommend dracaenas as another house plant um, that you could add to your collection um, when you think about easy to care for plants and i say this as well easy to care for plants are plants that can tolerate lower light conditions can be more drought tolerant 
and that's basically it i i think that some plants are more finicky because they need high light or they need to be watered a little bit more frequently but these plants that i'm showing you my plant foldies these are easy to care for plants because they're low light tolerant and they can handle being a little bit underwatered all of these plants right here though look at this so you know how i showed you the janet craig compacta this one is a mature version of a janet craig compacta or dracaena janet craig compacta notice how the stems have um, um gotten woody the, it, it took a while for this to grow i'm not even sure how long it is but if you see the bottom leaves on a uh, dracaena um, falling off or even an aglonema getting leggy um, truthfully that is their natural way of growing in the wild and it actually um, gets woody but that is so cool that the the top parts remain pretty compact and then you just have all that wood stem right here and the green as well but this is a cool looking dracaena janet craig compacta that's just the mature form and hopefully you plant foldies are loving these videos that i'm showing you as of recently i am trying to mix up my my plant shopping videos for big box store video shopping as well as local plant nurseries um, i am just excited that i'm able to actually highlight the melissa texas green acres i love green acres i remember visiting the irving section and i spent a good almost two hours in the indoor section just filming and talking to the staff um, tanya out in the um the Irving uh, Green Acres location was super cool. I hope to see her sometime, but it was really nice to meet Parker out here. So I'll have another person to talk to about plants because I am such a big plant nerd. Um, plant foldies, you know, we talk about this during our live premiere chats, but I do a lot of one hour plus shop, you know, plant shopping videos. I try to um, give you guys longer content because I definitely want to have a little bit more time for all of us to interact live time during the chats i am working on trying to get a facebook group for grow folds created as well as planning for my vacation out to the philippines um, i um, fly out on june 27th and i will be gone for about 18 days I don't want to spend my my time editing videos because the average time to edit a video like this for instance it takes about five hours from filming to voiceover to um putting on the um, plant ids i know a lot of you guys like the plant id so it does take a little bit of time but know that while i am gone i'm probably going to just do compilation videos of all of my plant shopping videos so i'll probably um, put about three which will make like a long three hour plant shopping video so hopefully you guys will not miss my plant my daily plant shopping videos i will be filming a lot of plant shops though in the philippines so you know that's something to look forward to it's only a couple of weeks from now it's another five weeks so I still have a little bit of time to maybe get some more content out. But anyways, let me stop rambling about that and just talk about the plants at Green Acres. So you can see all of these Sansevieria right here are snake plants are for $9.75. Um, low light tolerant plants, even that Raven ZZ plant is a low light tolerant plant. This one is also for $13.50. This is one of my favorite snake plants for Sansevieria. This is a Sansevieria Fernwood. I like the, um, the, the look of this particular Sansevieria. And you can see we've got some whale fin sansevieria and one of my favorite dracaenas. This is a dracaena riki. Look at that as well. And that is not a bad price at all for a dracaena. And that's the thing about dracaenas. Not only are they easy to take care of, they are typically very cost effective. So one um, dracaena series I'm going to buy is actually collect these uh, dracaena warnecki eyes or these um, dracaena um, this is a Dracaena Kanzi Dragon, Kanzi Dragon. This is only for $9.75. And I regret not purchasing this today. I debated on getting it because I just recently bought something, you know, a similar one out at North Haven Gardens. It's the Dracaena um, Urban Urchin, but that is a beautiful Dracaena. And again, these small Dracaenas right here um, will grow up to about three, be three to four feet tall. Now this is a plant foldy favorite. This is a Dracaena Tornado. And this one actually is a little bit more variegated than mine. This is for $9.75 in a four inch planter. Now some of my Canadian plant foldies like Kathy, I always have to shout you out. If I could ship to Canada, I would ship this to you because I know you like um, Dracaena Tornado. Um, let me know 
the comments if you guys like Dracaena Tornado and actually what plants you guys like so far from this um, Green Acres um, nursery, what plants that you want to see. Um, again, I am trying to garner more comments in the comment section, so I hope you'll take the time to leave comments. You can actually leave comments live time as you watch this video and put timestamps. I would love that as well. But as I pan out here, while this um, nursery may not be as full as the, the other nursery out in Irving, it's cool to see that on the first day, they've got quite a bit of plants already. Like right here is a Dracaena Gold Dust. I actually was tempted to buy that as well. Um, especially this one right here because this one actually has some really good variegation and look at the roots it's like literally popping out this one definitely needs to be repotted but this one is only for five dollars and 55 cents i believe and that's not a bad price at all now you can buy this as an exotic angels um, plant from costa farms at a big box store but i would actually choose to buy this dracaena gold dust at green acres nursery specifically Again, they have some really nice plants. I love this as well. So this is a cystus um, discolor. Look at how beautiful the, the foliage is. It has more of a velvety texture about it. And I love the purple undersides of the leaves. Now this plant is a little bit more vigorous in its growth. Um, it is a little bit more of a finicky plant though. I will say that it does require a little bit higher humidity for um, for it to really do well. And then we have more finicky plants or I would call diva plants. And this is a whole table of Calatheas, Stromanthes, prayer type plants. And then we also have ferns. So all of the plants on this particular table um, need a lot more water. They need to be frequently, um, their soil needs to be frequently moist. And then this one right here is actually a Calathea. I have, this is a Calathea Stella. Love this as well. Um, it, it looks similar to a Calathea White Fusion. Love that variegation. This one is for $20. Um, I have to convert mine into hydroponics. And for those that don't know what hydroponics is, basically it's taking like a plant like this um, Stromanthe Triostar, for instance, um, and washing away all of the, the soil or substrate and just having bare root and then sticking it in water, like put it, growing it in a bowl where you put like plant food to feed it. And that's it. You just pretty much grow it in water. Now, Calatheas are really good candidates to grow in hydroponics because Calatheas in general need to be watered a little bit more frequently. Like if you let that soil dry out too long, the leaves of a Calathea will start to crisp up. And that's the thing. And that's really the unfortunate part about Calatheas is look at how beautiful the foliage is. Like hands down, Calatheas have some of the most beautiful foliage out there, colors and varieties, but um, they may look beautiful at like a nursery like this place, but then you take it home, give it about two to three weeks and they may not be as pretty. And that's really the sad reality of Calatheas. I don't want to sound negative unless I think I sound more bitter, honestly, than negative just because I can't grow Calatheas um, as easily. Same thing with this maiden hair fern. Like look at how beautiful the leaves are. It's very delicate, but this plant definitely needs to be um, moist or at least in, you know, to keep the soil wet. Otherwise, it will crisp up as well. Now, here is another beautiful Calathea I like. This is the Vitata Calathea. Look at that. I love green Calatheas. You know, a lot of Calatheas will typically have like, you know, a really cool pattern and then like a purple underside. Call me crazy, but I like the green, just the regular green ones as well. Like this Calathea Vitata is super cool. And then we have a Thenanthe Gray Star. This is another one. And this is for $22.50. So it's still within the range of a big box store um, plant. Like I know Proven Winners actually sells them for a lot um, more expensive. So this is another type of Thenanthe or Gray Star plant that I would buy. I may end up buying this at... Um, green acres and pretty much i'm going to get myself in trouble in terms of just the amount of money i'm going to spend at this particular nursery like i really got to watch my budget i have been doing fairly well and i think it's because i have a plant obsession and that is coleus plants and the thing about it is people will say why coleus plants it's not a philodendron it's not an aeroid it's not some rare calathea or some variegated alocasia it's literally a bedding plant that most people will grow outdoors that can be grown in indoors but hey it is inexpensive and i'm all about plants that are not as expensive lately and you can see here though there is a full table of 
um, different types of ferns. And then this is a classic Calathea ornata. So this is one of my favorite um, Calatheas. I love that pin strike that the pin, um, the pink on it is beautiful. And then we have some more Calathea here. Now this is a large Calathea lancifolia or rattlesnake Calathea just next to all of the other Calatheas right here. And then this is a Calathea orbifolia. I try to grow three orbifolias. I can't maintain that beautiful leaf. Look at how beautiful it is. I almost feel like Calatheas need to be all bunched up and you have to like give it purified water. And then you also have to give it like a humidifier at all times for it to really just look beautiful. And that's not always something that's applicable to most households. And um, that's the reason why I have really ventured into finding more easy to care for plants. I mean, I'm all about admiring plants like tech, like, like this right here. Look at this beautiful ficus lyrata over here as well um i do love how wide and large the leaves get this is for 2250 here and you know ficus lyrata or fiddle fig leaves you can find them everywhere um you can find them at like a big box store in a local plant nursery but um at this location they do have the indoor plants separated um i am excited for them to continue to get their inventory up um, I am excited to see more of the Hoya. So unfortunately for this um, video, we won't see any Hoyas, but we will see some beautiful Alocasias. Like I like how they've styled this Alocasia. So they've got this massive Alocasia Regal Shields and it is a very look, um, healthy looking Alocasia Regal Shields. Like you can find one this large, perhaps at like, you know, Home Depot or a big box store, but surely not as healthy. Now this is another Alocasia. I don't know the plant ID for this Alocasia, but do you notice how my, many little babies are popping out of this Alocasia? Like the, 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 mother is, the mother plant is more mature, but you can see all of these little Alocasia babies popping up. This is a large plant for only $25, and that is not a bad price at all. Now this particular Alocasia, especially in my grow zone, which is 8B, you can actually grow this in a landscape shaded area. I I believe and it will do well it is a perennial it will just die back in the winter but then come back up in the spring and that's a uh, alocasia tiny dancer we've got another alocasia pink dragon this is only for nine dollars and 75 cents that is an amazing price considering when you go to walmart um, you can find alocasia pink dragons being sold for 1747 so definitely you know, you have to compare and contrast a lot of your plant pricing, but I will say the um, Green Acres has some fair pricing for house plants and just their outdoor plants. And if it is slightly more expensive for certain plants, know that they have healthy plants. And I highly recommend going to Green Acres. Um, I know there's a lot of plant foldies that watch. And if you ever visit the, the Dallas area, you can see that even this Melissa, Texas one, and Melissa, Texas is a very small um, northern suburb of, um, um, Dallas, it is still giving us some amazing plants like this Alocasia Black Velvet. Love that as well. I love the velvety leaves. I just wish for Alocasia they they were not as like spider mite prone. I have you know a lot of people will say Alocasia don't like me. Totally get it. They're just a challenging plant. And then right here is a Calicia repens rosado, beautiful plant. So this is almost similar to a trade scanthia. If you are going to grow this plant, this plant can get very leggy very quickly. Make sure you're trimming it back and you can actually take the cuttings and propagate them in water and they will root very easily. But as you can see here, I'm just going to pan away and show you some more of the tables. Um, you can see here we have one more plant I want to show you besides this Alocasia cupria right here i believe let's see what else do we have we have a xanthosoma that one right here so we always see xanthosomas actually at a big box store um so costa, costa farms trending tropicals plant but you can see this is another plant that is offered at green acres and it's got a beautiful foliage as well i love the um the, the patterns on the leaves and then over here we also have another alocasia low rider let me just pan away and show you what other you know what this table has right here
this alocasia has about three other baby plants growing out of it so you're actually paying um, you're actually getting four plants for the price of one and then you can see here this one also has a couple little babies just shooting out right here i did collect some um, alocasia corms from my um, alocasia calculata and one of the four pots that i actually um, planted actually is starting to sprout a new alocasia so that's exciting and then over here is just another tiny table. I wouldn't say tiny, but just a bunch of like plants that are a little bit smaller. This one is a Palea peperomnoides or a Chinese money tree plant. Um, this one is for $9.75. Um, it's another plant that actually shoots out little babies so you can constantly um, harvest those babies and make new um, plants. And then over here we've got an aluminum um, plant or a polia plant. Love the texture of this plant. This one is for $9.75. And then we've got some type of peperomia that I'm not 100% sure what the plant ID is. So plant foldies, as always, if you know the plant ID, please leave that in the comments section. Um, really want to know what your thoughts are. And I I actually want to know your thoughts about this peperomia um, watermelon so i was able to get a variegated form of it the peperomia gold dust and it is beautiful but just even the watermelon um, shape and the look about it is so cute and then over here we got a polia molis um, that's not a bad price at all as well. I love the texture of these leaves. Now this particular polia does require more humidity as well. You also want to make sure that you are watering it a little bit more frequently. You want to keep the soil moist. Um, obviously you don't want to over um, let it sit in water otherwise you'll get root rot but you can see this is another table at the Green Acres um, location out in Melissa, Texas, and then this is for $13.50, but this is a beautiful variegated Hoya Compacta. Actually, it's not variegated, sorry. This is just a regular Hoya Compacta here, or Hindu Rope. I know you guys are fans of this. I didn't know that they had this Hoya, but um, I might actually buy that one as well. That is actually a decent price for a just a regular green form of a um, Hoya Compacta. I love Hoya Compactas. I think they're cool. I want a variegated one at some point. And then this is another um, table I wanted to take a look at. So like this one right here is a table full of just Monstera. This one is an Amidrium Silver. So the thing about Amidrium Silver is it does have some venestrations here. This is for $32.50, but really once you let it to, once you let it trail it actually starts to shoot more runners so you want to actually grow it up a totem pole or a plank and then this is an epipremnum panatum baltic blue this one actually fenestrates or splits its leaves without even having to be on a totem so i find that really interesting it's another plant that it's pretty vigorous in its growth it's pretty fast growing and then we also have a monstera peru here this one is for $27.50. I want to get a Monstera Peru. I would prefer to find a variegated form, but even the green form has some beautiful texture on the leaves. It's got a lot of leaf interest. And then over here, we've got a wide form of a Monstera Adansonii like that a lot and it looks like this is a cost of farms plant this is for $27.50 um I haven't had the best luck growing Monstera adansonii long term I don't know what type of care tips I'm doing wrong but I haven't been able to really grow that successfully and that goes to another subject about certain plants we might follow the care tips but they just don't end up loving us back I mean it's kind of like similar to when I try to grow Hydra Helix or what I would call for my newer um, viewers, the correct way to say it is Hedera Helix, which is an English Ivy. I mean, I would love to be able to grow English Ivies, but they just don't grow for me um, no matter how hard I try. So I'm actually curious to see if there are any problematic plants that you guys actually have. I'd love to hear that in the comments as well. And you can see all of the little cute um, air plants they have here. So these are not fake plants. These are actually legitimate, um, you know, plants that are for, you know, like living. Um, these air plants, the way you would take care of them is in order for them to be water, you just have to soak them in water, but pull them out, let them dry out and they're good to go. Now they have these like stations here where you can see your planter with, you know, your planter that you want to pick and you just stick the plant in there. That's what you call a catch pot. And you can see they've got several examples of these alocasia cuprias. We've got a bromeliad in that planter that actually works very well. And when you think about a catch pot plus a grower pot, the grower pot is actually the pot you originally buy with the plant growing and you just drop it in there. You don't necessarily have to like re 
pot the plant in a planter. I would say for plants that you buy from a local plant nursery or even just a big box store, I would refrain from like repotting them um, for at least a week to let them acclimate to your environment. And most of the time, most plants don't need to be repotted unless you can see the roots just, you know, busting out of the bottom of a drainage hole. And then these are my favorite planters that uh, Green Acres out in Melissa offer. These teal and gray planters, love the matte finish. The navy blue is stunning. I actually want the yellow planter. I also want this Philodendron's Kwame Ferrum. This one is for $50. And look at how large that leaf is. Love the fuzzy petioles. Um, it's another very interesting plant. It's another plant that's actually easy to propagate from cuttings. You can actually take a cutting, stick it in water, and it will root. And you can just see all of those modern planters are really nice. And then obviously I, I struggle with you know, cactus and succulents. I really don't know my cactus or succulent plant IDs. So I kind of rely on just the plant IDs on the planters, but these ones just say um, premium foliage. So assorted, not really sure. Now this one right here is a barrel cactus. Look at how prickly this is. Um, that's kind of scary. And I think these are booby cactus. I'm not 100% sure, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but these are for $45. That is kind of pricey, but I believe that might be the booby um, cactus. Not 100% sure, very interesting shape, I would say to say the least. And all of these plants that we're looking at right here, these assorted succulents and cactus require a lot of light. Um, just know that you can grow those outdoors. And these are actually different types of echeverias for $9.75, not a bad price at all. And you can actually do a, an um, echeveria arrangement. I've always been a fan of this particular one. I think that's like the pearly banvon and you already know that this cannot be a grow fold plant shopping video unless I look for coleus. So I snuck outside real quick just to show you that I found a new coleus plant. This is a coleus orange rust. Look at how it's got more of a rusty look about it. The leaves look like they are just illuminated and these are only for $8.75. So I'm super excited about that. And then I'm gonna show you all of these Kong coleus plants. So this is the Lime Sprite. These um, Kong coleus are the ones uh, that get very large leaves. They can get up to three to four feet tall and wide. So um, that's really cool. But these are for actually $8.50. I already have the Kong Rose. I have all of the coleus on this table actually. That's how obsessed I am about coleus plants. But you can see right here, this is another coleus this is the kong red for eight dollars and fifty cents but if you haven't already started growing coleus i would um recommend growing them you can go to like a big box store or a local plant nursery and get coleus plants and if you can't find them you can also grow them from seed but i will be buying this out of all those beautiful tropical plants i am still choosing to buy this coleus orange um rust because it's such a cool looking plant now going back to the whole like um, plants that they have in this indoor section, you can see that they do have quite a bit of plants. Um, I am excited to see what other plants that they have um, that they will eventually add. I, mean, I, did, I forgot to ask Parker how many trucks that they're gonna be getting or how frequent they will be restocked or even stocked for plants. I am confident with that. But one thing I am really excited about is possibly winning that variegated Alocasia Adora. I really want that. I put my name in the drawing. Um, so maybe I'll get lucky. And then here is a Ficus triangularis here, another Ficus plant that I like. Um, that one I actually converted into a bonsai as well and it is doing very well for me outdoors and then we've got a chiflera plant some money tree plants or pachira aquatica that's another plant that i would like that one is for 50 dollars um, i'm looking for a variegated form but you know the green form is nice as well i know that if i went to a big box store i might be able to find it a little bit cheaper but as i said before let's support local plant shops so like for the plant foldies that are not in the dallas fort worth area let me know what plant shops you like to shop at in the comments section and check this out so i didn't expect to see this this is a Diphenbachia cool beauty this is a pretty rare Diphenbachia, and i believe this is um for like 30 dollars or close to 30 dollars i got lucky finding a trending tropicals one at kroger for 16.99 same plant same size six inch planter but for those that are looking for this elusive Diphenbachia cool beauty 
Here it is at the Green Acres out in Melissa, Texas. Now with Daifenbachia, they are a, a bit of a challenging plant. You have to make sure you are pro providing it with a lot of light, bright indirect light. I am actually growing my Daifenbachia outdoors and they're doing very well for me because Daifenbachia tend to just be a little bit more spider mite prone. This one is another aglonema. This is another aglonema silver bay, um, a common aglonema. And I will say aglonemas in general, you need to grow these as well. That This one is for $22.50. This is an aglonema BJ Friedman. And with aglonemas, the reason why I say you should grow one in your houseplant collection is literally they are very drought tolerant. Like you don't have to water them nearly as much. They can tolerate lower light conditions and they have such beautiful foliage. Like they have a di of different varieties of different colors. Like this one right here is only for $15.50. Beautiful Aglonema Maria, love that as well. And you know, the Aglonemas come in many shapes, sizes, and forms. I think that in the United States, we only are accustomed to seeing like say this Aglonema Red Siam, but in Indonesia and Thailand, they actually hybridize these um, Aglonemas to really have some beautiful pink colors, orange colors, almost yellow colors, um, red colors. It's really stunning. And then over here, I find this interesting. So this is for $9.75. This is an Aglonema Leprechaun. So I don't know what an Aglonema Leprechaun, um, what makes it different versus an Aglonema Silver Bay. They look very similar. And, you know, I would say they're also, you know, the common thing is they are beautiful plants. I love the silver foliage like this one right here. I'm not 100 percent sure what this aglonema is because it has even more nuances in its actual leaves. And then you can see we have a bunch of hanging baskets of trade scanthias. This is the Sabrina um, trade scanthia. Love it as well. I love purple plants. And, you know, you think about purple plants or dark foliage plants. Um, they are just very elegant looking. One of my favorites um, to grow, and wow, look at the the, the root bound on this um, Syngonium White Butterfly. This is for $9.75. I would actually buy this, and this is a plant I would say you need to repot. Um, just because the roots have already gotten out of the drainage holes, it's crying for a new pot, but lovely looking um, Syngoniums. Again, highly recommend Syngoniums as another plant to grow if you're starting, um, you know, growing plants indoors and you can see that you know pretty large aglonema silver bay right next to this um syngonium neon pink this is for nine dollars and or actually this is a syngonium strawberry what a beautiful syngonium it is and you can see that this syngonium is actually starting to trail the thing about syngonium is they actually want to crawl up upward up a totem pole but some people will just grow um, syngoniums and let them trail i would i would say that i would prefer to grow them up uh, on like a totem because when they mature the leaves actually change from like a an arrowhead to actually three lobes and i think that's super cool and you can see they just have a lot of um, syngoniums as well. This is a syngonium milk confetti for $13.50. Now, this one doesn't have nearly as many pink confetti like type um, variegation. But needless to say, it's a nice, beautiful, light color plant. And then as I pan away again, we've got some more assorted aglonemas and Diefenbachias mixed together. I will say Green Acres also has some really good plant styling. I like the arrangement that they have with the plants. Now this one is an Aglonema Moonlight Bay for $40. I would say that's not a bad price at all. You know, aglonemas tend to run more on the more cost costly side, but this is a plant that is actually challenging to kill unless you just legitimately just neglect it altogether as in you don't water it for like two months and you just don't take care of it it is a plant that is very forgiving um i do love it a lot and i actually want to know this particular aglonema's plant id i'm not sure what it is but it is another plant that um I definitely want to know the plant ID for. And that's the thing about our plant folding community. I just feel like I've learned so much from you guys as much as you may um, have learned from me. Again, I just try to give you guys all of the plant insights that I have learned over the years growing plants. I am no, um, by no means a plant expert. Um, like even with this Diefenbachia, I don't know this particular Diefenbachia's plant ID name, but I just wish I'd be able to grow Diefenbachia because I've killed a bunch of Diefenbachia and I think it's because of the lighting conditions they require. 
but as you can see um, it is a little bit late they're about to close so I don't want to like stay too long to film this video but you can see right here Daifenbachia Amy this is probably one of my favorite Daifenbachias because look at how light the leaves are beautiful variegation I may introduce a Daifenbachia soon um, the Green Acres plant nursery what a beautiful plant nursery this is and I am excited that um, I was able to at least go on the first day that they had house plants available and that's really exciting um, I will be waiting for more of these plants to start to stock up um, I am going to come back for sure for the Daifenbachia another well maybe this Daifenbachia Amy for sure I want to get the philodendron um, squamiferum but as you can see um, my plant foldies I hope you guys enjoy the green acre um, plant video I ended up buying this coleus plant um, this is only for eight dollars and fifty cents I will be heading home to you know edit this video I will see you guys on the next one and please support Green Acres in Melissa Texas bye